This is a new tech production. This is a new tech production. This is a What's up everybody? We back uh, on the iCast podcast. And uh, real quickly, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about uh, another another important uh, factor in the Wu Tang clan is you can't have you can't start a record label or you can't get into the music industry without financial backing. I know now uh, all you gotta do is put a little song up on YouTube, put a little video up on YouTube. You know, you spitting some bars and you putting you doing a beat or some shit and people can discover you like that. But in 1990, 91, 92, there was no, there was no social media. There was, so you had to, if you were going to come out in the rap game, you had to have somebody uh, backing you. More than likely, 10 times out of 10 is, is your local neighborhood drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, case in point, uh, not to, uh, not to label these guys as that, um, but, uh, Divine and Power are two, uh, men, two figures who were, uh, who were the financial backers of the Wu-Tang Clan? If you if you look at the series, I don't know how true it is, but you had uh, Divine on one side, which is uh, RZA's brother, and uh, you had Divine, RZA, and Ghost, and Dirty. On, they had their little team. And then you had, on the other side, uh, Park Hill was uh, Power and uh, Raekwon. Well, right now he's known as Shaw, but uh, you had these guys were a team. And these two sides won the head. It was Park Hill against uh, West Brighton. So these guys always bump heads. It was like, it was like you know, for Trent heads, it was like North Trenton and East Trent. They never got it. They, ne they never get along for generations, these guys. Those sides of town have been beefing. So, But yeah, the Wu-Tang was funded by Power and Divine uh, through them hustling. You know what I mean? Take a lot of money for studio time, uh, for records getting pressed. Uh, all these things, uh, 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 graphics and logos and all these things cost money, man. You can't do it without money, man. And then shit ain't cheap either. Equipment too. So Divine and Power uh, were, were, were the backers, uh, were the funders for uh, for uh, the Wu-Tang Clan. So eventually they turned into uh, to, into management. The management team, Divine um, was like the accountant slash manager, I believe, and Power also uh, uh, launched. Uh, he he was the big uh, the big thing behind uh, the Wu Wear clothing line. But anyway, speaking of these two sides uh, colliding, um, brings me into our uh, our next topic is uh, which uh, what album came out after um, uh, Method Man? Well, what the next album I'm gonna talk about is Cuban Links. Great, okay. of, uh, that came out after Return of the Thirty Six Chambers, and this was I say it's like a collab album between Ray and Ghost. It's not really a Raekwon solo album. Because Ghost is on almost every song, and plus he has his own song, Wisdom Body. Mm -hmm. So I say it's a collaboration album, even though it's a Raekwon solo, but that's beside the point. Um, this is when RZA started to get a little bit less dirty with his beats, but it was still dope. You know, he started to add more strings and more um, uh, interesting instrumentation into his beats. Songs like um, Knowledge God, like the strings on that stuff, I love the strings. It's so fucking dope. And um, Ice Cream. Um, the thing with that song was, I think RZA, he took like some type of, um, uh, some type of song, like an oriental song, some Japanese or Chinese song, some, some Asian song. Mm -hmm. um, he, he slowed it down really, really slow because the original sounds a little bit, you know, too happy, but he slowed it down and then that's when he gives like this ice cream truck type of theme. It worked for the song because the song's called Ice Cream mm -hmm. and um, there's a video for that song too, check it out. Um, also, this is when... Um, Rizzo, uh, this one, uh, shit, uh. Well, anyway, man, we so, get back to that, man. Um, <laughs> you got cut. Only built for Cuban links. This shit was an album. It was a, it purple, was like a, Purple tape. Purple. Yeah, it was known as the purple tape. Purple tape. You know what I mean? It was a street banger. Hands down, this fucking album was like one of the most off the chain, best produced lyrics, features ever, ever composed, man. You know what I mean? Only built for Cuban links, like he mentioned, um, uh, Ice cream, um, but incarcerated scar faces. Come on, man. Need I need I say more, Carson man? Scar. That that track, that those man, it was like the most perfect marriage between Ray and Rizzo, man. On that song, man. It's the song uh, talking about incarcerated scar. I mean, the, the album title alone, only built for Cuban links. It's only built for it's only built for hustlers. It's only built for drug dealers. It's only built for street cats. It's only built for the. You know what I mean? For the forgotten, for the project, for the niggas in the project always getting money. You know what I mean? And this from start to finish, 
You got these guys, uh, they, 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 they sniffing lines. It's a lot of Gambino uh, themes in this, uh, in this song. Yeah. Uh, you got a lot of uh, um, Scarface samples. Um, you want to you want to talk more about yeah. the about the also, uh, samples and shit. Also, if you know about Cool G Rap, Cool G Rap was he was the really the first New York rapper to bring in that mafioso rap, right? Because you know, Road to the Riches, Wanted Dead for Alive, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive, and uh, Live and Let Die. On those albums, like Cool G Rap, he had um, drug references all throughout those albums, and I think Raekwon heard those albums and he wanted to put his own spin on it, right. the whole Gambino stuff. So he took on that whole entire Scarface persona to a higher degree than Cool G Rap ever did. But right. yeah, we mentioned Cool G Rap on like the first uh, or second episode of uh, the podcast. Talk about rappers. Talk about rappers. Riches. Talk about riches, uh, riches. How rappers, a lot of rappers got their influence. But yeah, you could definitely see that um, yeah. because, uh, like I said, uh, Scarface. You had uh, that the sample from uh, the Killer movie. Um, it just had it, man. It, it, and also. Um, it also sparked these guys changing their names, the yes. Wu Gambinos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I can't forget every every name, but uh, you know Method Man and uh, everybody changed their name to some kind of uh, uh, mafia type of mafioso uh, type of uh, type of Italian I, I, mob. mob I can't names. even think of it. I can't even think Johnny of that names and shit. Johnny Blaze. Yeah, Meth became Johnny Blaze. Arms. Yeah. Um, Golden Arms. Bobby Stills. Uh, yeah. uh, Noodles. Yeah. Um, uh, who else? Starks. Tony Starks. Exactly. So, um, also that, 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 when that happened, you had a lot of people like, not only the Wu-Tang changing their name, everybody in the industry changed their name now. So it, it was like, at that time, everybody was AKA something else. You know what I mean? Because, uh, Huh? Frank White. Exactly. Biggie Frank changed his name to yeah. Frank White. Don't forget they just did um, that album. And also Shark on the album, niggas. yes, Shark on that uh, on a skit. There's a famous skit on that album where they um where they diss Biggie, where they make a reference to uh Biggie uh biting off of Nas's album cover, you know, uh on the uh album cover for um uh, what's not uh, uh, um, no die. not ready to die. Illmatic. Nas is Illmatic. Illmatic Illmatic's album cover had a picture of Nas um uh, kind of, kind of photoshopped uh, with the projects behind them, but it was Nas's little kid. So uh, Ray and Ghost was saying that Biggie kind of took that concept uh, on on his Ready to Die album when he had the, the picture of the baby uh, sitting there. So it was, um, uh, due to pop, you know, due to um, it wasn't actually Biggie on the album cover. It was just some random baby. But a lot of people yeah. like to say that was Biggie, but it wasn't. That's why I'm not saying. That's why I don't really believe it was a bite because it's not like Biggie put his younger picture on right. Ready to Die. It was right. just some random baby. So, right. Yeah. Well, just the fact that it was a, it was a young, young version, you know, like a young child, young. It's supposed to be a young, you know, child version. And I think they were kind of, they were kind of reaching and, and, and shit like that. But you know, but it it was something that made you think like, yo, man, they come, they coming that bad boy, they coming that Biggie. And um, they were, they were for that. Um, and you had acts, I mean, you had like J. Root Damager, he was going that bad boy too on on Rap yeah. and Math. It yeah. was just a popular thing because back in the mid '90s, like Bad Boy, that's when him, hip hop started to become way too commercialized. Yeah, it kind of got, got divided. It got like divided between divided. the street and the business. And the, yeah, and the, the exactly. And the uh, uh, Bad Boy uh, was all about uh, sampling pop records and, and, and taking old pop records and, and and making like pop hits and pop and, and making. Uh, Hip hop shiny with the shiny suits yeah. and the cars and the money and being real flashy. Wu Tang, on, on the other hand, uh, was the total opposite of that. You know, um, of course, uh, Old Dirty's uh, favorite speech on the Grammys uh, was Wu Tang is for the babies. Or for the no, he said uh, Wu Puffy is bad boy is bad boy is okay, but Wu Tang is for the, the children. Or some shit like that. Yeah. 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 So um, that's another thing with Old Dirty Man. Yeah. Nobody, it's Old Dirty Bastard. Uh, Stormed the Grammys, he, 1998. He, he walked he on said, the Grammys. He had a big suit on. He said, "Y'all just bought this. That cost me a lot." Who of money was winning the Grammy? Or somebody was somebody else? Yeah, I forgot. Man, it was somebody was winning the Grammy, but he was upset because Hi, right. they were they were they were nominated for Album of the Year against Puffy, and I think Puffy won. Or something somebody, like that, somebody from and, and yeah, and, and and old dirty felt some kind of way, you know, like <laughs> he, like you said, he got up on that mic and somebody totally interrupted somebody's Grammy speech, got up on the mic and was like, told the crowd that he paid a lot of money, money for the <laughs> suit, you know what I mean, and he really felt that Wu Tang should have won, you know, yeah. and man, like I said, man, old dirty bastard, he was one of a kind, you but, know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, later on, Kanye did that shit, but nobody did it like, uh, nobody did it like old dirty bastard, man. That just made you love him. Made you love him even more. 
You know what I mean? Can't forget Meth was on Biggie album. Yeah. Yeah, on the what? On the what? Meth was on uh, uh, yeah. on the what? The only feature on uh, on uh, Ready to Die yeah. as well. So I know at that time Meth was probably kind of kind of staying back. Uh, you know, that's because, uh, that's why there was a lot of inner, inner turmoil between Wu Tang and Biggie. Because on the other hand, you got Ray and Ghost like saying I fuck him, but Method Man he was on Ready to Die and he was the only feature. So that caused a lot of problems too, because you know one half the, some of the group hates him, some of the group likes him. Yeah, it caused a lot of controversy. But overall, built for Cuban links, man. I think that was probably you know, one of the best. Uh, that's my neighbor and shit down there. Don't worry about that, guys. Uh, but that. Uh, like I was saying, only built for Cuban links. I would say was, pro was probably uh, one of the best uh, Wu Tang solo albums to come out uh, from the Wu Tang camp. You know what I mean? So uh, we just gonna we just gonna pause for a minute, real quick, y'all.